evening, everyone. Welcome to the Pittsburgh Board of Education meeting via Zoom. Welcome. If everyone could rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. During this time, the Board of Education would like to offer a moment of silence for the lives lost in this worldwide pandemic and to those families impacted by COVID-19 in our own community. Thank you. Due to the new venue for our Board of Education meetings, we'd like to offer one public comment session. Um, we're making a slight change to that. Typically we'll have two public comment sessions, but this evening we're offering one. And we will offer that right now at the start of each of our meetings going forward. If you wish to address the board with a question, we just ask that you raise your hand, you'll be called upon, and then you'll come forth to the board with your with your question. If you could just please clearly state your name and address um, and we'll allow a maximum of three minutes per question. Do we have anyone, Matt? Yeah, letting the first one in now. Okay. Okay, I see Sarir Fazali. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Amy, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Good. Welcome to our board meeting. Thank you. You had, a, you had a question to address the board? Not necessarily, just listening and just trying to keep it, <clears throat> trying to keep things straight. Okay. Is there anyone else, Matt? There is, we've got one more person. Okay. Tiffany Bonus. Let's see Tiffany, but <clears throat> I don't hear anything yet. Like she just left. Okay. I'm wondering if, if in the public comment, some people are hitting the wrong link. It could be. We have two yeah. separate links, one for public comment and one for listening in on the meeting. Is and there anyone else in the room, Matt? The room is, uh, the room is empty, Amy. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh. So at this time, we'll, oh. is there someone coming through? Yeah, Tiffany came back in. Okay. I'll try this Try this again. <clears throat> hey, Tiffany, are you there? Okay, she's connecting right now. Tiffany? <laughs> Tiffany, are you with us? That's okay, you guys. I don't have anything to say right now. I just was getting on the Zoom in case there was something. Okay. I wasn't sure which link to you, so thanks. Okay. All right. Thanks for joining us tonight. Okay. With that, I think we'll close public comment session unless there's someone there, Matt. Yeah, one more person um, coming in. Okay. I see Laura Lombach. Laura? Hi, everybody. Hi, Laura. Oh, wait, I gotta start my video here. I've been doing this so I know what to do. Um, I'm just on to uh, 
first of all, say thank you. And I think we're probably headed to Ellens Creek, but I wanted to know how they're going to roll that out to students and when I should tell my kids and all that whole thing, if that's the way it goes. Okay. Mike, did you want to answer that? Sure. Uh, thanks, Laura, for being on tonight. Um, hope you and your family are doing well. Um, and likewise. We're going to, thank you. We are um, next on the agenda, or very shortly after this, uh, we're actually going to provide a recommendation to the Board of Education. Um, in that recommendation, I will share um, uh, that we'll be communicating, uh, should they approve, immediately to families um, and to teachers. So okay. at that point, I would say it's your discretion, um, but I would recommend um, the sooner the better because part of our transition plan will entail uh, the principals reaching out to families and students. Okay, great. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Thank you. Laura. Now do I sign out of this part and go back? <laughs> <laughs> You're stuck with us now. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. You probably want to do that, I'm sure. So yes, Laura, that's correct. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Laura. Hmm. Anyone, it's, out? Anyone it's, else, Anyone else, it's, 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 uh, There's no one left in the waiting room. Okay. Thanks so much, everyone. So moving on with the agenda, if I can have an approval of the agenda, please. So moved. Second. I have okay. Pete and Kim. Yeah. Um, any questions, edits? None. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, at this time, we'd like to hear from Dr. Kimmer on the attendance boundary line recommendation presentation. Thanks, Amy. I'm gonna actually start us out with that. Uh, okay. Matt, do you wanna um, just put up the, the, the first slide and I can start um, from there? Give me one second. That's great. So you can keep it right there, Matt. That's perfect. Okay. Thank you. So before, before we actually go through the presentation, the first thing I want to do is acknowledge the fact that we absolutely never anticipated making a recommendation when we were isolated from school. Uh, we all believe that making significant decisions while we're not together is not desirable. Uh, however, the situation was certainly unique as our attendance boundary committee had completed all but one of their meetings prior to school's closing. In total, we've held 11 out of our 12 scheduled meetings, forums, and presentations. On March 31st, the committee met virtually. I wanna say thank you for that as well. And they came to a recommendation that I approved. We did discuss postponing this decision. However, we felt that the numbers were such at Menden Center that this would not be responsible especially given the concern that we may see an influx of families enrolling into our schools from private and parochial schools, given the economy. Please know that should the board accept my recommendation that we are prepared to immediately notify all staff and Menden Center elementary families via email. All impacted families will receive a hard copy mailing prepared to go out tomorrow. Uh, principals at the same time from Jeff Road and Allen Creek are poised to welcome families via email tomorrow and begin the transition process, which will involve a range of communications to students and families, from phone calls to Zoom meetings to emails. Uh, please know that uh, if you are impacted, our principals are committed, we're all committed to making this transition as smooth as possible. Um, we wanna take into consideration in your voice uh, as it relates to placement opportunities. Um, we wanna keep students together um, where it's beneficial. Uh, and we want you to have voice in that process without question. Um, so with that, um, I wanna say, uh, give a special thank you to um, all of those parents that have attended uh, multiple meetings. Uh, I want you to know that your questions were heard um, your voice was heard, um, your input was heard uh, and processed. Uh, I wanna thank Dr. Kimmer uh, for facilitating the committee. Um, I know that this is something that 
um, not all of us uh, volunteered to do or to be a part of. Uh, but in the end, um, I promise uh, that uh, you will be taken well care of uh, and your students uh, will do fine. They'll actually do more than fine. So with that, um, I'd like to go over the first few slides and then I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Kimmer uh, with the recommendation um, and work that led up to that. Next. Just a review for those that haven't attended the forums. Uh, we had multiple stakeholders uh, attend um, as committee members. And I have to honestly, sincerely give them a ton of credit uh, because this was a heavy lift. Um, the parents that were on the committee um, may or may not be impacted um, by the recommendation. Um, they were very open-minded. Uh, they had their sights on the big picture. Um, our teachers within all three buildings were able to provide different perspectives. And it was never about fighting over turf. Um, it was about doing what's best for students. Uh, our, our PTSA, our administrators, um, we're, we're all phenomenal. Um, and, and so I, I have to thank them because of the amount of hours uh, they put into this, the amount of data they've sifted through. Um, they, they really need a, a, a really big applause from all of us because um, they did all of this in the middle of the year, which is, which is a very busy time. Um, and it certainly cut into family time and um, of note, all of their work was, was volunteer work. Um, also want to thank um, individual groups um, beyond that, like uh, um, our paraprofessional, uh, Lorinda Spring, who is al also able to provide um, information as it relates to impact um, on those paraprofessionals that work very closely with all of our kids um, across all of our buildings. And certainly want to thank um, our PDTA president, uh, for um, helping uh, to, to um, process all of the information uh, and, and make sure that collectively uh, we stayed a whole um, as far as our uh, decisions and um, ultimately the recommendation that's coming tonight. Uh, the group was, was spectacular and, and, and hats off to all of you. I want to give you a, a huge bravo and, and a huge thank you. Next, Matt. Um, as you can see, um, and I shared at the beginning that this was never a decision we, we took lightly. Um, we wanted to, to, to be as transparent as possible throughout the process. We wanted to provide multiple times for feedback. Um, and we were so close to being able to do this together. <laughs> um, but we fell one meeting short. So as you look at this list, the timeline, uh, the only meeting that took place since we have been quarantined, if you will, um, has been March 31st. And that was the culminating meeting um, and, and it was done virtually. Uh, and again, facilitated by Dr. Kimmer and everyone attended. Um, they had a lot of materials in advance, processed um, everything to date and, and came to me with a recommendation. So here we are in the last step on April 20th, uh, which is a recommendation from me now to the board. Next, Matt. One of the things that was critical uh, in, in this entire process uh, was to, to ensure that our committee um, had a set of guiding principles that they would remain committed to. The first one was that students must stay on the same middle and high school track Students on path for Barker Road and Menden High School would not be impacted. So that means that regardless if you're going to Jeff Road or to Allen Creek, or if you stay at Menden Center, um, you're still going to be reunited uh, at uh, Calkins Road Middle School in sixth grade. The recommendation also reflects uh, consideration given to not moving fifth grade students, which you'll hear about shortly. Uh, we did review transportation implications. This was especially important um, as we talked about um, some, some type of 
incremental movement or, or gradually moving kids out of med and center. Um, and to be quite transparent again um, regarding the, this issue, uh, transportation was a, a, um, really limited some of our choices uh, in particular because of the bus driver shortage that we're seeing across uh, the state, certainly across our county. Uh, as the guiding principle, we looked at proximity to the school. Um, we did not want to divide neighborhoods. So we did not want to look at taking one side of a street or dividing neighborhoods uh, apart. We also talked about options that can't involve a capital project um, because uh, one, it would not be approved by the state because we do have the space within our district uh, to absorb students uh, in different buildings. And we also talked about a proposal that must include enough movement to address the challenges. None of us wanna be back here uh, five years later, uh, so, or 10 years later for, for that matter. So we, we looked for a recommendation and our committee actually did a, a wonderful job finding a recommendation uh, that would allow us to um, release the valve at Menden Center um, without causing uh, issues or problems down the road at Allen Creek or Jeff Road, but at the same time release that valve enough where we can absorb uh, more than was projected uh, in the next five years uh, as a somewhat of a buffer. So with that, go ahead, Matt, next. I want to um, conclude again by thanking families um, that were at our forums and for anyone that emailed. Uh, I hope that your responses to your emails and phone calls um, were of satisfactory, or of satisfaction rather, and um, want to thank our committee again uh, for their work. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Kimmer uh, for the rest of the presentation. Good evening, Board of Education. Good evening, community, and good evening, central office team. Uh, before I move forward, I want to thank the Board of Education because I know the Board of Education has followed this process throughout and has attended every one of our public sessions and have followed documents like the one I have here on the screen. So I will be doing some high level passes knowing that every one of the board members and central office team members have gone through the details of these slides. I also, before I move forward, wanna thank the data team. I think of people like uh, Kathy Kaufman and Jamie Kogler who spent hundreds of hours looking at sectioning over the five years that the superintendent spoke about, looking into the future for those three schools in question. And I wanna thank people like Donna Larson who's worked collaboratively with the town of Pittsburgh to look at mapping and continues to look at mapping software moving into the future. And then of course, Becca Hyatt for keeping us together as a committee and keeping our data team together. She's the glue that makes everything stick. So with that said, the slide you have in front of you is very busy. And knowing that you've seen this slide before, I would want you to think about a few things that helped the committee narrow the alternatives down from 26, that's quite a few. Won't read all these to you, but I think of things like whether or not we are going to move fourth or fifth graders. You'll see in the different 26 permutations, that being a, an element that we moved in and out. Will we move fourth graders? Will we move fifth graders? Will we keep them at Menden Center? That was a question that we continue to ask as a committee. You'll also see in this very busy grid in the 26 alternatives that we looked at that we went neighborhood by neighborhood with the criteria. And I'm gonna show some maps in a moment. But what happens when we move neighborhoods in and out of Menden Center and move them either to Allen Creek or to Jefferson Road. What does that do to sectioning? What does that do in simple speak to classroom usage and teachers and support staff? The data team, the committee that Mike spoke of, our superintendent of schools, um, that's the extrapolation that we are out, able to do out five years out into the future. I would also have us look at this chart and look at uh, sectioning. Um, for those five years, we try to dial in one of the million dollar questions, how large we wanna make men and center or how small do we wanna make it? As a committee, we try to aim for 28 to 29 sections with men and center, Allen Creek around 17 to 18, and with Jefferson Road around 24, 25 sections. Those are some of the aim lines after listening to the principals give feedback, directors and others to kind of right size the schools as we move these neighborhoods in and out and look what it did over time. 
We absolutely met with Darren Kenny, our assistant superintendent for business and Kathleen Herrick, director of transportation numerous times to make sure that these 26 alternatives and to really better understand the impact they would have to make sure that they were real and that we weren't moving students or neighborhoods or families um, without some solid feedback from those that are gonna make this happen. We also looked at turnover rates in these 26 scenarios. We looked at turnover rates, which means simply how many families move in and move out by these different streets and different neighborhoods that we track both with the town through tax rolls and through our infinite campus student information system. We took a hard look at rental space and apartments, not just uh, home dwellings. We made sure all that was uh, baked into the mix to make sure that we were looking at the long view for our three schools so that we right size them. And of course, as always, the Board of Education sees me in each January do a uh, overview of construction. We certainly took construction both near the throughway and as far north as Allen Creek to make sure that we are keeping an eye on construction for the next five years collaboratively with town council women and men. Matt, if you could change the slide, please. With those major ingredients, and there was much more, but keeping this high level, I just want to read <laughs> left to right for everybody. Uh, the screen that you have in front of you up on uh, with the slide is the map for alternative S, and alternative S is the recommendation, the alternative of the 26 that the committee came to consensus on. And I mean complete consensus. I was very proud of the deliberation and the thought um, that went into uh, that consensus. If you start at the top of this uh, map, uh, not everyone on this call or everyone on this Zoom meeting today um, is familiar with the map, but if you look at it offline or with quick glance right now, you'll notice that 1A is a purple shading. That is the section that would potentially go to Allen Creek if the Board of Education approves this this evening. If you think of the canal or just north of the canal, that is the set of neighborhoods that we're looking at um, potentially moving those students to Allen Creek this September. If you go just below that purple shading and you use the Pittsford gold shading, that banding that goes across 1B, 2A, 3B, and 3A, those neighborhoods, that swatch would move to Jefferson Road. Those men and center students would move to Jefferson Road for the upcoming school year. And then you'll see in some green shading, which I also shared in public session back in March, that 2B and section or quadrant four is off the table. We will not be moving those students. So moving to the right of the, the slide that you're looking at, this alternatives, this alternative specifically letter S decreases or potentially could reduce Men and Center by six sections and reallocating those students possibly by one section to Allen Creek and filling existing roster spots while potentially moving uh, into four empty classrooms that we have at Jefferson Road and filling other open slots as well. And again, this would take place immediately if the board approves. Hey Jeff, if I could just do this really quick. Um, so, so for those that have not been at the meetings and maybe do not understand sections, uh, sections are actually a term that we, we use for scheduling and sections are a class, a, a classroom, if you will. So when we talk about moving or reducing men and center by six sections, what we're talking about is taking six classes out of men and center. Those six classes allow men and center to, um, for a, to a large extent, bring back a lot of the things that they've sacrificed, including things like a faculty dining room. And before we move this uh, slide forward, I just want to read something off that I may have failed to mention that is fifth graders with this recommendation would stay back at Menden Center um, to grandfather them in so they could finish out their fifth uh, grade experience. And that would be the uprising or the coming fourth go fifth grade students is what I mean by fifth graders. Okay, Matt. So breaking this down um, by the neighborhoods or by the quadrants for those of you that are seeing this for the first time, Going back to that section 1A, which is at the northern or top tip of this map, you're looking at a range of 27 to 34 students. And there's a range because we do have turnover between now and September as we track this uh, annually. And um, if we allow some students to, to stay back, meaning fifth graders specifically, and I'll talk more about that in a moment on a different slide, there is a little bit of a range. It's not an exact number here in April for a September start. So these would be the students moving from uh, Menden Center to Allen Creek. And then um, fifth graders would have that um, 
assignment to stay back according to the committee. Fifth graders, um, there are fourth graders now, four go five would stay at Menon Center. Okay, Matt. Moving a little bit south of um, Quadrant 1A, which gets us closer to Jefferson Road. I know the map is small on the slide for those of you watching this, but uh, Section 1B has some commercial space and some uh, wide open space, which makes the numbers a little bit smaller. So that's not a typo because here there's a range of 12 to 17 students that would be affected. Again, these are the students that would go from uh, Menden Center to Jefferson Road and the fifth graders the rising fourth graders, in other words, would stay back at Menon Center next school year. Matt, you can move forward. Just below 1B is 2A. Our recommendation as a committee would also be to move Quadrant 1A to Jefferson Road. This is a range of 20 to 24 students. And these students would go from Menon Center to Jefferson Road while keeping the rising fourth graders, next year's fifth graders, at Menon Center. Okay, Matt. And then we get into quadrants 3A and 3B, and depending if you've been following us from the beginning, that can also be equated to um, map section three. Here it's just shown as two different sub subsections. It's a little bit larger in geographic space and is mostly home dwellings. Here we have a range of 60 to 79 students, and these students would move from Menden Center to Jefferson Road with that same assignment of rising fourth graders, next year's fifth graders, come September, staying at Menden Center. Matt, you can move forward. This is the slide I was alluding to. Uh, I wanna read this carefully so that everyone understands. And I would encourage the board to ask questions during uh, Q and A. But the committee suggests offering families of rising men and center fifth grade students the option to relocate the newest to the new school assignment when a younger sibling is relocating or to stay at men and center. Um, so the fifth graders with siblings will have a choice on whether to go to the new school if they have family members to kind of keep the family together and to make it a little bit easier on, on parents. So this option here would affect nine families in total. I believe from memory, it would be one family going to Allen Creek and eight going from Menon Center to Jefferson Road. These are the fifth graders next year that would have siblings that potentially if the board agrees could um, have the option to stay or go. So at this point, I would just like to pause and turn it either back to the superintendent or to President Thomas to uh, field questions that I could answer or the superintendent could answer. Thanks, Jeff. Just what, one other point that I, I would make as it relates to uh, placement for students. Uh, during public comment, we heard one of the questions about making sure that we don't take too few people um, so that uh, students would um, be uh, the singleton uh, in a grade level. Uh, and to try to keep neighborhoods together. And, and I, I think this recommendation has, has addressed that um, in that uh, while Allen Creek is a smaller number um, of students moving there, uh, there is no grade level um, of any single students um, being um, relocated. And so at minimum, um, there are two or more students from Menden Center at every grade level that would be going to Allen Creek. So with that, I would um, certainly um, love to hear uh, questions from the Board of Education. Does anyone have a question? Go ahead, Ted. Just to make sure that I understand, looking at 1B and 2A, um, if we were to not do those areas, we would at a later time end up having to re readdress this issue? I would say based on the projections that I've shown the board back in January, um, the number of students projected to enter Menden Center not only becomes a problem next year, but in years two and three beyond, it would absolutely uh, be a problem. So we have to do what Superintendent Piro said, and that is taking enough students and making it a fix for at least the next five to 10 years. Thank you. So that was one question that I had, um, Jeff, and it was based on um, some of the questions that were asked at the public sessions. And looking at those enrollment projections, what does that look like beyond five years? So there was a high point at Menden Center where we were going to reach 861, and I'm going from memory, so if it was 860, please um, bear with me. But you know, it, there's a problem come next year, there's a bigger problem in two years, certainly a problem in three years. It just continues to escalate. 
Um, the areas that fall within the men and center catchment areas are where we're building it as a, as a town. So moving enough students, I would say, in these areas to fix the immediate problem of the next 36 months, knowing, and as the superintendent said earlier, that we can't build onto the school. We really can't build onto any of our schools without a five-year project. We do need to act with a, a, a solid set of numbers that would fix the problem, not only next school year, but for the next five to 10. Amy, I would also add that um, we are um, not entertaining uh, new builds going to Menden Center. Uh, so, so that will also assist with that, that longer term projection. That's great. Any other board questions? Yeah, Amy, I have a question. Go ahead. <clears throat> um, Mike alluded to it earlier uh, with respect to, the, I don't know, the economy for lack of a better word, but what kind of impact can we expect from private parochial K through five school kids over the summer, perhaps opting to move out of their private parochial setting into um, one of our elementary schools? Thanks. I would say that we left ourselves at least 40 to 60 slots in each one of our schools, knowing that there could be move-ins and or what you just said, Pete, and that is with uh, private schools, possibly um, them losing students and us gaining those students. So we have left room, we have by no means maxed out Allen Creek or Jefferson Road school with this scenario. I would agree with what the superintendent said as we continue, even though it wasn't part of the purview of the committee, we're looking near the, the Southern Hemisphere of Menon Center and looking at new builds. That's work that we will continue to do as a central office team. But uh, we have left room for growth for sure, whether it's because of move-ins or whether it's because of private school changes. Great, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, I have a question. Um, Jeff, on your last slide, it talked about moving the allowing the fifth graders to move or not move if they have siblings what if they don't have siblings are you going to give them that option as well in order for us to make the substantial changes in sections classrooms and teachers as the superintendent defined it we really can't give the fifth graders without siblings that option uh, we would like to be able to balance all three schools the way we've planned this so that we can plan ahead and just offer it to those with the siblings so that, that's a great question, Irene. So let's just rephrase that a little bit. So the current fifth grade students, or I'm sorry, the current fourth grade, the rising fifth grade students um, without siblings will remain at Menden Center. It is only the students with younger siblings that will have the choice to remain or go. Thank you. And, and I have one more question and that's on, after school care, could you give us a little bit of understanding of what's gonna happen with that, with all these moves? Mike, do you wanna take that one? So I can tell you that we have um, great partners uh, in our after school programs, and we have uh, reached out to um, our after school coordinators, uh, for example, the YMCAs um, that, uh, that work in our buildings now, um, they've, they've given us um, their best commitment possible uh, to be as flexible, to allow as many families in. Uh, they've held spots. They, they are um, uh, willing uh, to certainly run as many sections and programs as they can across our schools. Um, we're, we are looking at, um, um, after this announcement is out, uh, for families to enroll um, and should there be any concerns if there's only a few families or not enough to run an after school program uh, then we certainly would be committed to transporting uh, to a school that does have it. Jeff is there anything you'd like to add there? No I think that was a perfect summary thank you. I'd just like to um, comment. I, I, I'm very impressed with this plan um, Jeff and I, I really um, commend you for everybody on the committee who thought really felt like they thought it through well, especially with so many options in the beginning. And when you look at the map, I, I feel like the, um, the boundary lines of where kids are going just make a lot of sense. They're main roads and mm -hmm. they're not, you're not breaking up anything. So um, I know that's a really hard, um, uh, difficult decisions for people to make. And I just want to say, I think they, they did do a great job. 
Thank you for that feedback, Kim. And I was equally impressed as they thought about all three schools and balancing not only the schools, but uh, paying attention to those boundaries and keeping neighborhoods together as given as guiding principles from the superintendent. So thank you for that feedback. One, one quick question too, um, regarding the nine families, if, if they so choose that they want to have their siblings go to one school and the, the rising fifth graders attend Menon Center, what are we doing to accommodate the scheduling for next year? I definitely have talked with the, the principals multiple times in all three schools. And um, I think Amy, what you're asking is, are we keeping friendships together? Are we keeping um, relationships together? To the best of our ability, we will be. So Island Creek has some smaller numbers, but we are trying to keep cohorts of kids, if you will, or groups of kids, especially when they go to Menden Center to Jefferson Road together with the help of uh, the principals collaboratively talking together. I'm also referring to like the calendar events. Yep, so I know for a fact that on the data team, we worked in conjunction with our communications office as late as uh, last week and a little bit into to today. And uh, we are doing the best we can to piece that patchwork together, knowing that some of our programs make it a little bit impossible to, to plan it perfectly, but we are absolutely taking into account uh, the various programs that we have in all three schools to try to piece things together. So, so, Amy, I, I would just answer that um, a, a, a slightly differently in that uh, as we create our district calendar for next year, one of those guiding principles were to um, look at the impacted families in the three buildings as given preference uh, so that um, activities and functions aren't happening on the same night to the extent possible. That's great. Yeah. Definitely looking at it. I can say that with great certainty. Anyone else? Yeah, just one more, and, and it's with respect to uh, transportation. Mike mentioned earlier, and Jeff, I think, mentioned having spent mm -hmm. a lot of time with Kathy and, and Darren. Does this make kind of the, the shift in, in kids going to whichever school um, make a difficult challenge of, of buses and drivers uh, more complex? I think Darren and Kathleen would both tell you that buses aren't the issue. Um, the more complex we make any of our runs, it's the whole idea of we don't have enough bus drivers on any given day because of the bus driver shortage across Monroe County. So we, we do aim for simplicity in that way. And when we make the runs more complex, it really puts us having to uh, make sure that the mechanics are driving, dispatch, even the director of transportation driving. So the easier we can make the runs, Kathleen was uh, aiming us more towards those alternatives um, so that we can have bus runs with reliability. Thank you, Jeff. Anyone else? Well, Jeff, I, along with Kim, um, commend you for all the work that went into this. This was a tremendous amount of work and effort um, from you, your data team, from the entire committee that worked on this um, leading up to the school closures. It was a lot of work and and as Mike said, a heavy lift. So so thank you so much for that. Um, very thorough presentation. You're welcome, Amy. And I can tell you having to, I've been on the phone with all three principals this afternoon and they're very excited to take in their new families if you approve this recommendation and they're really excited to see their uh, smiling faces of the students. Okay. So Amy, with, with that, um, I would ask uh, for the board to consider uh, the recommendation um, as presented. Okay. So may I have a motion to approve the attendance boundary line recommendation? Irene first and Kim was second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motions carried. Amy, if I could just um, come back to families. Uh, so families will be hearing from principals tomorrow. Uh, they'll be receiving a confirmation email this evening from me. Um, but I would also add that if there are future questions, questions moving forward uh, for families to email me directly, um, and then uh, I, I will decide the, the best uh, pathway uh, to either address the questions myself or to send them in uh, to either um, the student services area or to our CIO area 
or to wherever it makes sense. But I would appreciate if uh, parents started with me um, if they have questions after they receive the communication. That's great, thank you. Okay, may I have an approval of the minutes from March 30th, please? Renee and Val, any edits? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, Board of Education reports. Um, as you know, we only have two functions um, and both are virtual. We have a board president's virtual meeting on the 6th of May and everyone on the executive committee, and I believe it's Val, Kim, and myself um, of Monroe County School Boards has received um, an email distribution of what would be the, the committee meeting. Um, so they've asked for us to vote virtually and everyone needs to submit that by the 1st of May. And thank you, Deb, for putting that on the calendar for us as a reminder. So all other meetings have concluded for, for the school year with respect to Monroe County School Boards. Our next um, regularly scheduled board meeting is going to be on the 11th of May. And that will be a virtual meeting as well. And then we've come to our BOCES annual election and budget vote. <clears throat> Everyone received that in your packets. If I could have a motion to approve the administrative budget for BOCES. So moved. Thank you, Ted. Second. And th thanks, Pete. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motions carried. And we have three candidates um, to fill three seats for the BOCES number one board. And I'll just read their names. Um, we have Lisa Latin, who's a resident of Pen Penfield Central Schools. We have Christine DeTurk, who's a resident of Honeyoy Falls, Lima. And we have Kim McCluskey, who is a resident of Pittsburgh. So with that, if we could have a motion to approve the board candidates for BOCES number one. I have Renee and Val. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Congratulations, Kim. Um, okay, financial report, Darren. Thank you. Have the treasury report for March 31st. Um, and I wanna really draw your attention to, that's a pretty big list of state aid receipts, almost $7.9 million. Really wanna thank um, the director of finance and the business office because it was a challenging year with the um, the transparency reporting requirements and also what's been going on with the with the state budget um, but that that's a product of getting everything in on time and keeping things up to date uh, throughout the budget process the, the the certain strategies have been employed in albany as far as freezing certain runs and they've updated information and got it in very timely um, for example bosey's aid three almost 3.8 million dollars um, districts that don't have that information in on time, it might've got frozen about a million dollars less because they were looking at a previous run. So really wanna compliment them because that's helping to position us even better for some of the things that you're hearing about for next year. <clears throat> in the school lunch fund, a bit of a challenge obviously because we're not taking in any revenue right now, um, but at least we are coming from a good per performance year and we have solid fund balance um, in the year. So. Uh, for March, it was a $42,000 loss with approximately half as many days as we normally would have um, with food service. So that's the highlights for the March report. <clears throat> okay. May I have a motion to approve the treasurer's report? So moved. Irene and Ted, any questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Third quarter, quarter extra correct report. Uh, I didn't see anything um, that was out of line with previous years. Okay. May I have a motion, please? Pete, may I have a second? I don't see a second. Kim's waving. Oh, she is waving? 
for some reason I can, oh, there she is. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the whole new world. Kim is second. <laughs> Any questions? All in favor? Uh, hey. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Next is a request for budget year end transfer for um, technology procurement through BOCES. Uh, this is also us employing strategy to keep up with the state and keep, try to keep our state aid at that same level that I previously spoke of. Uh, last year, we had a big technology initiative. And so rather than having the BOCES aid do a roller coaster ride, we're trying to keep that stable. Okay. May I have a motion? So moved. Okay. And Renee, so we have Ted and Renee. Any questions? Mm. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. You. Thanks, Darren. Human resource report, Mike. Uh, thank you. Uh, first, uh, for your consideration is the professional staff report. Um, the major part on that is the uh, April 1st deadline for paraprofessionals to put in for retirement. So you'll, you'll see that there. Then um, if there's any questions on the rest of the report, happy to answer them. I have a motion, please. Wow. Okay. So we have, I saw Kim and then I saw Vale. <laughs> Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motions carried. Uh, thank you. Second for your consideration is the support staff report. And we, um, we do have one retirement on there and then um, one other um, adjustment from a, a, a resignation. I have a motion, please. So moved. Thanks, Todd and Renee. Any questions? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Special Education Report, Elizabeth. CSE and CPSE recommendations on the consent agenda. Great, thank you. Chief Information Officer Report. Jeff. Good evening again. I offer to you a first reading of our student and staff data privacy policy. The entire policy is in red because it's a brand new policy that uh, Erie One BOCES in Buffalo helped uh, author and uh, has been vetted by our central office team. Uh, it's got its roots. It has its roots in 2D law, which started in 2014 to protect student and staff data. And just recently in January 2020, part 121 regulations came out that kind of tells the schools and tells all of us really how to implement this new law. So this policy is a buttress and it fits in with that law and with those set of regulations for your review. It's a hefty review. Yes, unfortunately all 14 pages need to be in the policy. We had great discussions in central office about that because it needs to be public and forward facing and that is part of the law. Right. Hey, may I have, oh, we don't have to approve that tonight. So thank you Mr. so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Superintendent's report, Mike. Thanks, Amy. There is not a need for an executive session this evening. Uh, on the consent agenda uh, is the second reading of the Medicaid Compliance Program. Wanted to thank PTSA at Menden Center uh, for the purchase of homework folders in the amount of $1,920. Uh, that will be going to all students in Menden Center Elementary School. I, um, if I could, um, wanted to just take a few minutes to talk about um, kind of our, our state of the state as, um, as I see it from, from my lens uh, at this time. And I think it'd be important first to uh, start with acknowledging the stress uh, that this pandemic has had on our families um, and our staff. Uh, I send a very sincere thank you uh, to our teachers and our administrators for evolving their craft to support students remotely. And I also send the same thank you uh, to our families for supporting us by assisting your children with their new way of learning. I think that understanding perspective is, is critical. Um, Many families are contending with not only their own jobs, but assisting their children uh, with organizing their learning for the day or their week, which includes receiving multiple emails, 
from multiple teachers uh, using various platforms and teaching their children new skills like how to upload a document or even logging in, especially at the elementary level. Similarly, many of our teachers are also parents and they're tasked with doing their jobs and supporting their own children. Our family and teacher stories um, are vast. Um, they're similar. Uh, they also vary to some extent. Um, people's experience during this pandemic as it relates to education um, depends on a lot of factors such as the age of their children, uh, the level of support needed at home, uh, the amount of access to multiple computers. We have several teachers with three or four children. We have several families with three or four children and they may only have one or two laptops at home. Uh, and so how, how does that work? Um, it's certainly a, a mutual challenge. Also, the level of support received at home is, is varied across uh, the two groups. Ability to organize schedules, um, dealing with job loss, spouses and partners working as frontline health officials, uh, and the list goes on. So, so there's a lot um, from both our side pushing information out um, and on the receiving side taking information in. Uh, and, it, and it's a lot, a lot to deal with. It's something historical. Um, it's something that, that we are struggling with, to be quite frank. So I would, you know, as a reflection, I would say that, that given this and, and more, there's never a time where we need to be um, supporting one another more than we do now. Uh, we, we need our, our, our families and our community and our, and our teachers and our administrators uh, to look at perspective uh, and, and to help and to love and to be kind uh, and to support. As educators, I, I promise you that we're working harder now than ever. I think the hardest part is uh, that people can't see it necessarily. Our systems and our processes have, and they continue to evolve. We've added more virtual presence recently. We've created recommended schedules to try to assist families. We've researched and posted hundreds of high-level learning resources, provided recommended time for assignments and classes, and we're now working on a system to house all of our student work for the week in one area at the elementary level, with the hopes that that will help with the organization of receiving multiple emails all the time. That will be a work in progress. In terms of equity, we've provided laptops for every family that's reached out. Um, we've also done our own reaching out and I believe that we are tapped out of laptops. Um, we've given out, I believe over 300 at this point. We are working with families that need groceries. <coughs> Excuse me, and with your help, we've collected approximately $37,000 to date. We've assisted 75 families uh, and we've um, totaled about $10,600 in expenditures to date. This week, we'll be sending another round of gift cards to not only the same families, uh, but to new families as well. Our hope is that we're able to provide, obviously, um, we, we, we're not going to solve a, solve a problem, uh, but we want to be the voice um, and, and to be the change for families where they can receive, uh, for example, $200 to TOPS or to Wegmans uh, to provide to the extent possible. Uh, so I wanna thank our Pittsburgh School Foundation for that. Um, I wanna thank our community for that. Um, we talk about basic needs and, and, and if, you, if you think about our um, whole learning mod model, uh, it, Part of it's based on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And, and, if, and if we can't feed our children and, and have them safe, uh, then we certainly can't expect them to make learning a priority. And what our community has done uh, is they've helped make learning a priority because they are feeding our families. And, and for that and more, um, I can't thank you enough. Uh, I'd, I'd also add the obvious uh, that there's no question that our lives have changed this year. And this happened without time to fully prepare. Uh, it happened when many of us were under the notion that we would be out for two weeks and then back to school. 
when this whole thing started, it was, um, you know, can we possibly marry a closing to the week before break? Um, and then we had, there we go. We have two weeks. We've only lost one week of school. The 14 days is over and, and we can come back. Um, that certainly, as you know, is not the case. We're now in week six uh, without school. And our mindsets have to continue to be on what we can control at this point. Um, as a, a leader of the district, I think our mindset at this point needs to be on how we can help. We've been out for six weeks and we're gonna be out longer. So when we think about how we can help, we process questions together um, all the time. We run through scenarios all the time. Um, we ask ourselves questions like, what are things that we can do to support our seniors this year? What are options for graduation? What are options for senior ball? And, and what are options for other milestones um, this year for our seniors. I mean, our, our worlds have been turned upside down, but our senior kids, I, I just can't fathom uh, what, what, they're, what they're thinking right now and, and parents. We ask questions like, how can we support families where employment and income are real life stressors? How do we assign grades in an ethical and fair manner grades K through 12. How can we reach out to students that are not connecting with us remotely? What do we do with the students that, 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 that aren't present online? What does that tell us? What supports do they need? We ask questions like how do our evolving systems and structures ensure that every child, regardless of their teacher, receives similar essential learning objectives? And then what does feedback look like to students so that they're not falling through the cracks? So that as they come back to school, either at the end of this year or early next year, we've um, streamlined um, the, the essential knowledge so that they're not behind the following year. We ask questions like, how are we preparing for next year's budget um, when funding continues to be an unknown? An unknown? Uh, we're in a place right now where there is no budget vote date approved. We heard today out of nowhere uh, from the governor uh, that we are looking at uh, an additional 20% loss in foundation aid. So what impact does that have on us? Uh, what impact does that have on schools across the state? I can continue um, with a, a lot more questions that we ponder. Um, we're constantly convening. And when I say we're constantly convening, um, I, I meet with our central office team once a week, uh, Dr. Mendoza uh, once a week. I meet with superintendents in the county three times a week. Uh, and I meet with individual, I meet with the principals once a week. Um, we're, we're, we are working um, hard uh, to try to find answers to questions um, that, that, that can go many different directions. But I can tell you that we have multiple contingency plans for whatever that answer might be. And, and, and that's um, a lot of time that we're spending right now because of so many unknowns. And we're doing that because we wanna make sure that whatever direction this goes, uh, that our students and our families receive the highest quality of, of expectation and education um, from, from our schools. So I, I think I would close by just by saying thank you. Um, I, I need to, to, to thank everyone. Um, I, I wanna say thank you to our teachers for and our administrators for, for working such long hours right now. Uh, thank you to our Board of Education uh, for remaining connected, uh, for approving policy. I mean, our Board of Education has, has volunteered and has been delivering meals um, and gift cards and raising money. And I wanna thank our community for being so supportive and, and willing to help wherever. Our community has stepped up with donations uh, to families in need. Uh, with a ton of ideas about senior events. 
so many positive emails. Uh, I, I need to thank our, our community for just taking the time to share kind words um, with and to our teachers, uh, to me, to our administrators. Uh, you, you've been amazing. The amount of positivity that has come from our community is, is, has been overwhelming. The, the, the realist in me um, will acknowledge the fact that things are far from perfect at school, um, just like they're far from perfect everywhere right now. However, I know that we're gonna turn the corner um, and I know that we will have all learned lessons um, that will make us better educators. Uh, they will make us better parents. They'll make us better guardians. And most importantly, I think they're going to make us better humans, to be quite frank. So I just hope everyone is as well as you could be. Um, I ask that you stay positive. Um, I, I wish I had answers to give you regarding when we're going to be back to school. Um, when we're going to get back to normal again. And while I can't give you a date, um, I can promise you that it will happen. Um, and I think that the time between now and when it happens um, and how we act and respond um, and what our mindset is like um, is, is something that I really do believe we should all be judged on. Uh, I think we we need to um, remain supportive and, and be a community um, that gives and loves uh, and is compassionate and and know that uh, the school district um, will do everything that we possibly can uh, to support students and families and our community in a real positive way. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> May I have an approval of the consent agenda, please? Renee and Irene. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Um, old business, does anyone have any old business? I have old business and it, basically isn't really business. It's just, um, I'd like to, I have a few comments from the board to share with everyone in the community. Um, I did this last time uh, at the beginning of our meeting, but we had public session this time. So I, I moved it to the end, but on behalf of the board of education, I just wanted to once again, recognize and thank those in our community who are on the front lines of this crisis. Our first responders, uh, we have one that actually is on the board. So thank you to our first responders, healthcare profession professionals, doctors, nurses, pharmacists, all the people that are working in um, the essential businesses during this time. We, we thank you for all of your effort. You truly are the heroes in, the, in, in this whole effort. We send our prayers for safety and wellness to each one of you. As a board of education, we're incredibly proud, Mike and central office team of how, and staff and everyone that it takes to, to handle a crisis of the mag magnitude that we're in, but incredibly proud that we've placed such an emphasis on safety and security of our staff and students and families during this time. Um, we recognize that this new reality isn't easy for anyone, but it's shown us what we're capable of. We're resilient, we're empathetic, we're dedicated to providing the best possible education despite the immediate shift from in-class instruction to learning remotely. Pittsburgh's not alone in this crisis. All public schools are united in this new reality. This is nothing we would have ever imagined nor expected, but we're so proud of how the entire school community has responded to the sudden change in all of our lives. There are numerous people the board would like to thank. I mean, we could take all night and, and thank each individual, but I don't wanna keep you here longer than you have to be here. Um, we're deeply, deeply appreciative of the countless hours and collaborative work exhibited by our central office team. 
you're deserving of a Pittsburgh Pride Award when we get back to school. Uh, to our staff, we applaud your dedication and perseverance during this sudden shift. This new educational environment requires each of you to provide essential learning to our students while balancing your individual family needs. And we know that, we see that. We appreciate your ongoing effort with our students during this extremely demanding time. Our students and families, you've been exceptional. You've been cooperative and patient as we navigate learning from our homes. I'm going through it too. It's not pretty. Um, we can all agree that nothing replaces in-classroom instruction. I have a whole new appreciation for teachers and what you do. Um, one of the silver linings in the past several weeks has been observing our greater Pittsburgh community living our district mission of being your best, doing your best, and making a difference in the lives of others. Everyone is doing their best under these circumstances, and I, along with the entire board, thank you. We look forward to being back together at some given point, whenever that is, but please stay safe and be well. Okay, new business. Does anyone have any new business? I just have one brief um, mention of the PTSA Life Membership Awards that are coming up. Um, I'd like to thank the PTSA for, for um, attempting to have a new venue for the Lifetime Membership Awards. They're going to have it on Facebook Live on the 28th of April. And Kim McCluskey is also going to be an honoree this year. She's receiving the Distinguished Service Award, which she is well deserving of after 24 years of serving on the board. So I look forward to being part of the watch party. Um, I would love to see a lot of you there, um, but I think that that will be a wonderful way to celebrate all of the honorees along with Kim. So. Does anyone else have new business? Okay, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thanks, Ted and Renee. Okay, everyone be safe and stay well. Thank you, Andy. Thank Thanks, you. Everyone. See you, everybody.